like 7.30 at night and I'm drinking coffee. Hi guys, my name's Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara's Never Seen. I have a tattoo now. My parents don't know about it yet, so hopefully they don't watch this. Hi mom, hi dad. <laughs> if you do watch this, don't read the comments. They're so bad. <laughs> I was home for Christmas and I showed my mom one specific comment that I got from somebody uh, calling me a liar for the whole series. That he was like fuming about Home Alone. <laughs> First of all, it's hilarious. Second of all, I showed my mom and she was horrified because it's horrifying. People think I'm lying about not seeing these movies. Anyways, today I'm doing Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Who wants to challenge me? Let's go! I'm a lazy movie viewer. I don't have a humongous passion for the unknown movies wise. I guess I like content that I'm familiar with and I don't know, This is it's been on Netflix forever, so I'm like, oh, I'll get to it whenever. And that makes me miss out on a bunch of like really badass movies that I'm sure I'm going to love. Like, I am going to adore this movie. I love, love Quentin Tarantino. Like, I think I've seen all of his stuff. Yes, Hateful Eight. Yes, Django. Yes, Inglorious Bastards. No Reservoir Dogs. No Jackie Brown. No Kill Bill Volume 2, but yes, Kill Bill Volume 1, which is one of my favorite movies. Yes, Grindhouse. No True Romance. No Four Rooms. No Natural Born Killers. Yes, Sin City. There's a Kill Bill Volume 3? <laughs> no <laughs> to that one. So I guess I haven't seen most of his movies. Tamara's never seen. Okay. I knew that I was going to love this movie. I knew it from the bottom of my heart. But guess what, guys? I loved this movie. I love that he combines all these little stories. He does that a lot. And then you get the titles. And it's just, it just all intertwines so well. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So there's this amazing start where Tim Roth and this other actress who I know I've seen places. What is her name? Amanda Plum, Plummer? Plumner? Plumber, I think. What have I seen her in? <laughs> what has she been in? I know I could Google this. Google! She's super quirky. I don't actually like that term for actresses because quirky has now become Zoe Deschanel. I think sometimes people get like cornered and like pigeonholed into like a certain type. Like, okay, Johnny Depp, who is now just like this crazy. You know what I'm talking about? I think it's the same thing with Zoe Deschanel. When people say quirky, that's what I think of, but she, this actress was super quirky and like nutso, but in the best way, I loved her. They want to rob restaurants and they're in a restaurant and so they decide to rob this restaurant. <laughs> and it just cuts away. Can't do hair flips. You can do bun bumps. I wonder if I hop. So it cuts to John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson. You can tell that they get annoyed with each other really easily, but it's like this brotherly annoyance. Their conversations in this whole movie are excellent. Their friendship is so great. And I love that they're BFFs for life. Best friend for life for life. And he's like, you know what's great about Europe? It's the little differences. Pretty much all the same. It's the little differences that are great. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I just I was just in Europe for the first time and I agree with you sir sir John Travolta king of Greece He's like yeah, yeah McDonald's you can buy a beer <laughs> I love that that's his example. I am the foot massage master. Marcellus Wallace is the boss of the BFF team and he's also just this giant What drug lord? Just a just a badass gangster? Just like a cool powerful guy who's intense? He's a band-aid on his his neck. So Marcellus bribes Bruce Willis, who is a boxer, to lose a fight so that he can then bet against him and then like win a bunch of money, I guess. I don't know how boxing works. I don't like it. It stresses me out. So John Travolta, Vincent, does heroin and then goes and takes out his boss, Marcellus's wife, Mia, who is Uma Thurman, who I have a giant girl crush on. And I didn't see Kill Bill for a long time because I thought that it was, um, I don't know why, but in my mind, it was Joe Dirt. Don't ask me, guys. I have no idea why I thought that. But I thought that Kill Bill was Joe Dirt. And I had seen Joe Dirt, the guy with the, like the mullet, you know what I'm talking about? I had seen pictures of him and I was like, I have no interest in that. I don't want, want to watch that. My friend was like, what are you? This is gonna be your favorite movie of all time. But yeah, I love Uma, is what this says. That's a weird position to put your employee in. Because if she enjoys it too much, then you're in trouble. If she doesn't enjoy it enough, then you're in trouble. So it's gotta be like this right mix of like, we're vibing here, but not too much, not too much vibes. It's just weird, it's so weird.
Square. So they go to the 50s version of the Rainforest Cafe. And at that point, I Googled when this movie was set. Cause I was like, is this set in the 70s? Question mark? I couldn't tell. You know, it's got, it's like a, got a really weird stylized, which Quentin Tarantino does a lot. They don't have a specific year for when it's set, but um, everyone speculates this the early 90s. Both of them are high. They're both at this 50s restaurant. He's high on heroin. She just went into the bathroom to powder her nose, which means taking a shit ton of coke. So they enter this dance contest, which is hilarious and awkward. I'm like, okay, Grease King. Get it, you awkward man. Have you guys seen that picture of the dog that looks just like John Travolta? It was just like a lot of this and a lot of like, like this. So they get back to her house and Marcellus's house and she pulls out his heroin, which I believe she thinks is Coke. So she snorts the heroin and overdoses. That's just such an intense drug to me, I feel like. And they're so casual about it in the, in the movie, which is so Quentin Tarantino to be like, yeah, well, both of you guys are high on a different intense drug and good luck. <laughs> I just wrote, She thinks heroin is coke and snorts it. Fuck. OD. Also, I forgot. <laughs> we have to bleep out my fucks, so it's gonna be a really long bleep. He drives her to his dealer's house and they give her a shot of adrenaline into her heart and she lives! I was like, well, now this is where the movie's going. Like, now he's gonna get killed by Marcellus because he killed his wife. And that's just where it's going. That's what's happening. Great, great. No, I know what's going on. Amazing, <laughs> fantastic job. But that's not what happened, you guys. So it cuts to Bruce Willis waking up from this dream of him being little getting the watch. And instead of going down in the fight like he's supposed to, he just kills the guy. He's like, small change just took artistic license. I killed him. So he gets back to this hotel room where his lover is at. She's a line that she said, I couldn't write it down fast enough, but it's something like, uh, it's a shame that what we like to feel and what we like to see are usually uh, different. That was so insightful and cool. I really liked that line. And then he finds out she didn't pack the gold watch and he freaks the f out. That watch has been in a lot of butts. You don't just forget that watch, okay? So he's like, all right, well, I gotta be stealthy. So he goes to get his watch and he finds the watch. He's like, you know what? I'm feeling confident. I'll make myself a Pop-Tart. He finds this gun in his kitchen and then he turns to the bathroom where the person who owns the gun is in. And of course it's Vince because Vince has a constipation problem because heroin and he just annihilates him. He totally takes him out. He shoots him, he's feeling very confident and he leaves. He gets in his car and he's like, hell yeah, doing great. Butch runs into Marcellus and then crashes into something and then like there's this whole like foot chase and then they wind up in this weird pawn shop and then the pawn shop owner pulls out his own gun and points it at Marcellus and Bruce and is like, don't, no, nope, you're not gonna shoot anybody in my store and at that point I was like, Hell yeah, pawn shop owner. I feel that. Don't shoot anybody in my store. I don't care who's on whose side, doesn't matter. But then you find out that he's a piece of shit. He's like an actual piece of shit who's like holding him captive. <laughs> so uncomfortable. But like it adds to the story so well. It was such a twist in the story that I was not expecting you guys. Like not even a little bit. It's like no one kills anybody in my shop except for me and Zed. Well, I guess we're gonna meet Zed soon, then Zed shows up. Butch escapes and then he's like, you know what? This is gonna be wise for me to do and kind and great as a human. So I'm gonna go back and save Marcellus. And there's this amazing scene of him picking the weapon he's gonna use. And so he, he picks up a hammer and then he's like, nah. And then he picks up a bat, he's like, nah. And then he picks up a chainsaw, and he's like, nah. And then he picks up a katana. So he goes down, saves Marcellus, chops a guy, and then like threatens another guy. And then Marcellus is like, I got this. You're excused for what you did to me. Leave now. So there's this amazing scene before Butch and his lover leave. She's like, where'd you get that motorcycle? He's like, it's a chopper. And she's like, where's my Honda? And he's like, so repetitive. Like he's so sad. He's like, I'm sorry, baby. But I had to crash that Honda, but let's go. <laughs> so then after that, the whole movie does like a lot of jumps. Uh, they jump back to the first scene where the BFF team is in that apartment uh, dealing with the guys who f over Marcellus. So then you see Marvin, who is like their insider who got them into that apartment. And uh, he's friends 
with Jules. And Marvin is freaking out. They're like, come on, Marvin, let's go. They get in their car. And then Vince accidentally, he, I was gonna do this, but like he legitimately accidentally shoots Marvin in the head and like he explodes in their car. They're on the freeway in LA and they're like, well, <laughs> Not sure what to do now. So they go to their friend's house, who ends up being Quentin Tarantino. They're trying to figure out, hello. Watch the whole movie with me today on my lap. It was very nice, it was so nice. I wrote, love the dude who comes to solve their bloody car problem, love him. So suave, so efficient. So they get everything cleaned up and then they clean themselves up, which explains the new weird clothes they were in, like the gym shorts and t-shirts um, that you see in the beginning of the movie, but you don't know what's happening. Cool timeline effect. So before they go back to Marcellus's place, um, they go get breakfast and they're in the exact restaurant that the couple from the beginning are robbing. And I love it so much. I should have called it, but I didn't. I was just enjoying it so much. So then everything comes together and the robbers rob everyone and they come up to Jules because Vince is in the bathroom because of course, because heroin. And he's trying to take the, the case from Jules. And uh, Jules shows him what's in the case, which no one knows what is in the case. And I love that. I love an unsolved mystery in a movie. Yolanda, be cool. Everyone that you care about in this movie ends up having a happy life. Vince doesn't, but also you have weird lips, Vince. So, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the writing is incredible. The acting is incredible. And I love the timeline aspect of it. I've seen every Quentin Tarantino movie except for Pulp Fiction. So it's about time that I watched this. And then I watched it, I was like, oh, it's amazing. And then I <laughs> looked at his list of movies. I was like, oh, you haven't seen any of his movies, Tamara. A couple, but not many. <laughs> Yesterday, I posted a video on my personal channel, Tamara Lynn Chambers at youtube.com. Let me go. I'm crushing it. <laughs> Bye. See you next week.